Hi everyone and welcome to the Solutions Plus online second course on the electrification of buses and its integration in public transport systems. My name is Saida Abdullah, I am Senior Manager at the Bus Unit and the Knowledge and Innovation Department JTP and I will be guiding you today through this first module on the introduction of electric buses. Uh, for those of you who do not know UATP yet, we are the International Association of Public Transport and we work to enhance quality of life and economic well-being by promoting public transport and sustainable transport modes in urban regions worldwide. As an association, we bring together all stakeholders related to public transport and sustainable modes. We have over 1,800 members from over 100 countries and among our members you will find cities, operators, transport authorities, but also the industry, a value chain and any other stakeholder related to sustainable transport in cities. Let's start with uh, today's uh, question. So, um, we will be looking together to uh, very basic uh, questions like what is an electric bus, what are the benefits and the disadvantages of implementing in, uh, an electric bus line, but also how electric buses can contribute to making public transport in our cities more sustainable, cleaner and make our cities real. So the basics of the technology. Um, an electric bus is different from a conventional bus in two main elements. The first one is they don't have an internal combustion engine and they don't have a fuel tank. These elements have been replaced by an electrical motor and a battery. And what electric buses do is that they use electric motors and motor controllers for propulsion instead of the before mentioned uh, internal combustion engine. Another main difference is the range, the autonomy. This depends heavily on the battery side you have on board and the duty cycle. The duty cycle is how you ask your bus to perform based on the operational parameters of your line. So like topography, is the wood hilly, is the wood flatter, also the climate, it is, uh, it is required a heavy use of the air conditioning system or the heating system, also the weight, not just of the batteries, but also the number of passengers carried, right? All this together with a charging strategy that reminds battery life. We will come back to that a bit in the next slides. Um, about the charging, uh, battery buses can be charged statically using mechanical and electrical equipment. The most common technologies you will see uh, in the systems uh, deployed in the market today are the manual connector, the plug, the CCS plug, or uh, the automatic connection devices um, like pantographs. I will show you examples. So, but when we talk about the electrification of bus fleets, what does it mean for operations today? The first reflection I would like to share with you is that we have a fundamental shift from vehicle approach to system approach. Why? Because we are not procuring and we are not purchasing buses alone anymore. We are also deploying the charging infrastructure for that and we need to take a look to the design of the service and operation. So, what we have heard always, when you deploy electric buses, you need to pay higher upfront costs from the beginning. Yes, that's correct. The vehicles are more expensive, battery buses are more expensive than uh, conventional buses, diesel buses. The infrastructure needs to be added to that. Also, we will need to consider the costs related to the depot upgrade or even the, 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 the construction of new depots if the location you have available today has not surfaced enough. And also the power supply, no? which, which connection to the grid we need in order to have the power supply required to, uh, to charge our fleet. Uh, but on the contrary, when it comes to the operational costs, this can be expected to be lower. First of all, the charging costs are going to be lower because the electricity price is lower than uh, the fuel prices. Uh, also, the maintenance uh, is going, is expected to be lower because of the less tasks related to this. There is some uh, classical tasks related to internal combustion uh, buses that are not uh, required when you operate battery buses. For instance, you have less uh, wear of the braking systems. And of course, you will also have um, 
to provide your staff with new skills that once you have climbed upon the learning curve, you're going to make that all your operational costs are lower. Um, as I was mentioning before, um, introducing electric buses means that we need to rethink new ways no, to procure the vehicles and the equipment. And these uh, can benefit greatly if the stakeholders involved, in this case basically operators and bus manufacturers and even the charging solution suppliers can find a fair way to, uh, to distribute uh, the technological risk. This was especially important at the beginning of the, of the deployment, uh, for instance in the CEUS project, no? when we were talking about really pioneering uh, uh, examples of the introduction of electric buses in urban fleets. Um, these new ways of operating, they required, especially when you, uh, when you are upscaling your fleet, when we are not in the initial piloting phases anymore, with a, with a reduced number of electric buses, it's going to require um, that you change, again, your perspective from a vehicle approach to a fleet approach, logically. We go from the vehicle level to the fleet level because we need to organize the charging, management, also the strategy of our charging and even the energy storage no? uh, strategies in a smart way. Also, in order to operate more efficiently, we can make use of artificial IT tools, um, of uh, artificial intelligence and IT tools to optimize the operation and the charging. The second question you will need to address when you deploy electric buses is when, where and how are you going to charge your fleet. Uh, there is different charging technologies uh, available in the market, so uh, your choice is going to be determined by the assessment of operational needs and conditions of your bus line. Aspects like uh, the, uh, the surface you have available are your depot, for instance, to deploy, uh, the charging infrastructure also if you can uh, opportunity charge along the route a terminal or at the depot etc all these aspects should be taken into account because they are going to ease uh, the, the the technology choice and afterwards how you are going to define and design your charging strategy the charging strategy this is how you charge your fleet it's of course based on the technology that you have chosen, the technology purchased, and also it's going to be, uh, let's say, re-adapted if needed, based on the operational needs and the conditions of the line, as we said before. Here on the bottom side of the slide, I'm sharing with you three different charging strategies. You know all of them. The first one would be depot charging only, which means everything that is related to charging hubs at the depot, and it can be done with the, uh, with the manual plug, you know, or with the automated connection devices, the pantographs, panto up, panto down, uh, what we call infrastructure mounted pantograph, panto down, what we call uh, roof mounted pantograph, panto up. Um, opportunity charging, this means during operation and can be, of course, done only with um, the pantograph because this is where you can high, uh, you can provide high power in a fast uh, in a fast charging session. No? we talk about perhaps five minutes of charging. No, it's like an extra boost. This can happen as we said along the route or at the depot. The depot is close enough. But normally, what you will find uh, in the in the systems deployed today is a combination of both, of course, uh, depot charging and uh, opportunity charging. And normally at the depot overnight, what we also call um, slow charging, is, uh, is one of the requirements also to, to keep uh, battery life um, up. And um, yes, this is uh, the combination of both technologies. So, what are the benefits of electric buses for cities? A very first obvious one is that thanks to the zero emissions at the tailpipe, we have a positive impact on air quality, uh, reducing the overall uh, emissions in the city. Also, we have lower noise levels, and together with these, we also have um, improved uh, driver's working conditions, for instance, uh, thanks to the uh, instant torque that improves drivability in performance, uh, drivers can accelerate in a more smooth way uh, and this 
again has a positive impact on the comfort of, uh, of passengers during the ride. This together with no exhaust fumes, no less vibrations, the noise levels, this helps improve passenger experience. Um, another important point, so when we talk about the introduction of uh, battery buses, and this is an opportunity to definitely uh, redefine and optimize the bus network, which is going to uh, provide a much more um, excellent service and with this we improve the image of the urban bus and see the attractiveness. Also from, from the design point of view, I have included here on the right side of the slide, we have uh, the EDSF2 uh, design charter for the introduction of electric buses. Uh, this uh, is a very interesting document where you will find guidelines to redefine another interface between the bus and the urban landscape um, with some uh, recommendations for the design of the vehicle and the infrastructure. Again, this with the main goal of creating no, a unique passenger experience and increase the quality of the service. This is going to be very positive, especially now in the post-pandemic period, to create uh, and to enable a service that help us to bring back uh, passengers to the bus transport mode. Now to conclude some uh, key aspects on the impact of charging infrastructure in public space. First point would be that in, logically uh, the impact depends very much on the technology chosen and the level of deployment. At the same time we need to consider any deployment of charging infrastructure on public space will be requiring space. But there is good examples of location and design of depots, for instance, through mixed-use buildings, as is the case with ATP in Paris. Also, we can consider opportunity charging at the depot if it's close enough, as we have in the example of uh, the Eindhoven bus system. As I said before, the design of bus stops, uh, the terminals and the parking areas need to be aligned with the city, with the city guidelines also to consider uh, what is the impact on the accessibility for other modes. This is why uh, the city, together with the energy providers and operators, need to sit together to design the network and identify suitable spaces for placing the charging infrastructure. And finally, before we go to the examples, uh, to have clear again that this technology choice and the strategy will most likely need to be adapted to the structures uh, of the, sorry, to the general urban structures and the required bus operations. So there is like two levels of uh, alignment that we need to keep in mind. First is the requirements of the service and the line and the requirements of the city when it comes to, uh, let's say, urban landscape guidelines, etc. And now some examples. Uh, here you see a very interesting one. It's the indoor bus stop uh, located in uh, the university campus in Lindholmen in Gothenburg. It was developed in the frame of the EBSF2 project and I find it special interesting because it showcases how this clean technology, zero emission technology, uh, enables us to bring bus closer to people. In this case, the bus stop is located directly next to the cafeteria of uh, one of the university buildings. Here we can see different examples of roof and infrastructure mounted pantograph, also flash charging in the center of the slide. This is the, the system operated by Semitan in Nantes at the e way. And you will notice that there is different designs, different color images, visuals for the several chargers. And in this last slide, I want to share with you some examples of conductive ground-based charging, as the name indicates, the, um, the charger is integrated in the ground, so the bus needs to position itself above it to be able to charge. And on the right side of the slide, you have inductive charging, also known as wireless charging, with the example of EMT Madrid, one of the lines they are piloting and operating this technology. And with this, that would be it from my side. 
Uh, I would like to invite you to have a look to this policy brief published uh, by UATP on the impact of electric buses on urban life. Perhaps you find it interesting and I very much hope you got at least a good overview on the main uh, aspects when it comes to the introduction of electric buses in our city. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a very nice continuation of the online course.